Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Pori Ranch stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first one is titled, Trying to use a stolen credit card? Think again. I'm a server at a restaurant and have been friends with another server named P. This story is going to be all about her by the way. I found out about all this later that night. P and I worked last night but I left early. P's friend, B came in last night to visit her and to have a nice meal. At the end of the meal, B realized her debit card was missing. After checking her bank account, $200 was already spent online from a store nearby. This was crazy because B just got off of work that was close by as well, meaning her card was lost and used within one hour. However, about 20 minutes prior to her realizing her credit card was stolen, three kids walk in asking for a table. They beg my friend to let them eat although the restaurant was going to close in an hour and they said, we'll tip you really good. All right good deal, my friend serves them and they rack up a $60 tab. When they go to pay out, they hand my friend a debit card. When she goes to a machine away from the table, she realizes it's B's card. Ironically the two booths B and the thieves were next to each other. P walks up to her friend and says in another language, is this your card? B goes, yes. That's mine. So then my friend goes to call the cops in the restroom, our police station is literally in the same plaza. However I think the kids were getting a little bit suspicious because one tried to leave but the manager already locked the doors since it was so close to closing time. When another server saw one guy try to leave, he tried to pass it off saying, oh I'm looking for my server. I need boxes to go. My friend used every bone in her body not to cuss them out at the moment. The cops finally show up and immediately asks for all of their IDs. The cop then goes, did you guys use this card? And they obviously didn't catch on what was happening because they replied yes and the cop goes, you know that the owner is sitting right behind you guys? They were in shock because what were the odds right? After questioning all the guys and my friend, one of them gets arrested for credit card abuse, which will be on his record for years. This guy starts to break down and starts apologizing to B saying, I just got laid off yada yada I'm so sorry. B tore this guy a new one because she was upset as hell. They knew what they were doing because when the thieves were eating, they shouted thanks for all the stuff B. The guy who got arrested was only 19 too. Good luck buddy. You deserved all the crap you're gonna get. The next one is titled, Sick the IRS on M. I am a doctor and a few years back I was initially paid as an independent contractor when I worked for a hospital temporarily. Things worked out and I was hired on full time as the director after a month or so. The previous director left abruptly, as in the middle of the shift, and they were in the process of suing her. As such I wasn't in a hurry to sign a contact with them, i.e. bad reputation, untrusting. I started to work full time but stayed as hourly wage and only when clocked in at work. However I worked every weekend, every holiday, was on call 24-7 and got called all day and all night. I approached them about other compensation for the hours outside of work and they kept saying they would pay me, to keep track of my hours, etc etc. Very reassuring and basically told me what I wanted to hear. After about a year I found out one of the other doctors was making more than me, not full time, no extra duties, etc. Super upset so I drew the line and eventually was allowed to start turning in my logged hours, though not for anything in the past. However I was still keeping up with emails, text messages, etc that were expected to be absorbed by my salary. I was only paid for showing up for meetings and for phone call consultations with other doctors. All told I figure I donated about 500 hours of my time. After two years I was tired of it all and found another job. I told them about it and they panicked because they didn't have anyone lined up to take over my spot. I offered to give them two months notice but they demanded three and basically guilted me into staying. I did have them give me a raise and a better schedule but still not printed contract, honesty I would have been happy to not work there anymore so at the time I wasn't too worried but figured they would give me notice if they wanted to part ways. Then strange things started happening, they hired another doctor they didn't need, extra, who was set to start in a month. I couldn't figure out why, especially after they just gave me a new deal. I saw a job ad out for a specialist but would have been fine if they hired one so again didn't think much about it. About a month later I showed up at work and there was another doctor there who wasn't scheduled. Turns out they had fired me via voicemail and I hadn't checked it yet. 
I called to see what was up and they just laughed at me then proceeded to tell me I was crazy, bipolar, borderline, or schizophrenic and that everyone said so and that I was unemployable. This after 10 years in the field, no complaints or negative feedback from them or anyone else. It was poorly run and I complained, vented about that and the lack of pay at various times but nothing excessive. I had already turned down the other job and it was no longer available. I was left unemployed with no severance, not even a face-to-face -face firing where I could tell them off. They could have easily given me the 60 to 90 days notice they requested of me. After a few weeks in bed feeling sorry for myself I found another job right away but was still furious. I looked at hiring lawyers. But of course that comes with legal fees and with nothing in writing it boils down to he said, she said and no clear mention of either party not being able to part ways without notice i.e. they were buttholes and I wasn't. I didn't file for unemployment as I know I was a contractor. After a year or so and some research I found a path for revenge. I filled out one or two page form and submitted to IRS, also alerted unemployment department. Eventually, about another year, I was granted employment status by IRS. Due to the deductions I had taken, I actually ended up owing some money, lose deductions, gain employer's share of FICA taxes, a few thousand I think. I never bothered refiling to be honest, so I kept all of my original deductions and such. However, they had to pay all my back FICA plus taxes, plus penalties which amounted to about $25,000. However, I also alerted the IRS that they were applying this method of employment to eight other doctors over the previous three years. Which meant they didn't have any employees and were skimming off the FICA tax onto the doctors, 90% of which were full-timers. I have no idea what actually ended up happening, may still be ongoing honestly. I assume the dominoes started falling. At the least they lost $30,000 on me. If they had to pay FICA on all 8 doctors it would be about double that somewhere in turns. However, if they got audited and found to have willfully tried to skirt around the taxes, which was pretty obvious because they did it to some doctors some years and not others, then penalty could include them having to pay income taxes as well. Total would end up being about $250,000. Not to mention they never actually had the interns on payroll, they just paid cash to another hospital who then paid them. I can only hope they got screwed. I put a hex on them via some old Chinese lady under a bridge who burned incense and such. One owner ended up getting throat cancer the other owner cheated on his wife and she left him. The next one is titled, it was a little league football game, it didn't have to end like this. When I was in 10th grade one got into refereeing football for a little league in town. I got hired by a random booster club mum. And she tells me they pay us in cash out of the snack cart money but hey no problem I was 16 getting $120 cash every Saturday sounds nice. So the owner of the league, we'll call him D from here, was a generally nice guy and had a son on a team. D was the guy living all of his failed childhood through his 9 year old kid. The season was going great except when I had to referee his games. He would get mad at any call involving his son no matter what happened. If his kid was on the line and went off sides we were expected not to call it, well I like to make things as fair as possible for kids so I would always call it. This would set him off and he would come running from the sidelines yelling at me. I tried to talk to him multiple times but his reply was always the same, it's my league so it's my rules, so I moved on and just kept doing me. The season was winding down and his kids team happened to make it into the championship game. The head coaches get to choose one referee each, D chose Doug, Doug's cool, I like Doug, and the other coach chose me. D calls me midweek telling me there was going to be a NFL rep. There to do the coin toss and evaluating the league for a sponsorship. Annoyed with his mid-game disruptions I decided to have some petty revenge and try upset D in front of the rep. On the day of the game I show up and act just like always, got everything set up then called out the captains. Out comes D with his son and the other coach and his captain. We get everything started and at first I let the little things go. I feel giddy but I know I have to let kid win a bit so he really feels the burn. The score was tied with 4 minutes left when I saw an opportunity to strike. It was 4th down on their own 15, D's son was at quarterback and instead of taking the snap from center he said, hike, and picked up the ball. Normally I would let this go, but it was D's kid so I tossed my flag. Expecting a 5 to 10 yard run you could imagine I was a bit surprised when he took it all the way for an 85 yard TD. Everyone on their sidelines going crazy, including D, when the other coach starts yelling, hold up, flag there's a flag. I call a meeting in the middle of the field and explain what happened. 
D wasn't having it he was staying surprisingly calm and he said I could either declare it a TD or take off my uniform, so duck it I quit. I'm waiting for the booster lady to pay me when she gets a call and says, D told me not to pay you. I waited till D was available and had it out with him when he makes it clear that I was paid under the table and that I could basically go get ducked. Time for some serious ducking revenge. I talked to that NFL rep on the way out and tell him what's going on and he seemed a little upset. Then I went ahead and gave a call to the IRS and gave them all the information I had. I forgot about it for a few weeks. Then, I got a call from Doug asking if I was the one that called him in and he explained that D had six other businesses that had a lot of under table dealings. He ends the call by saying, that was pretty ducked up. It was just a little league football game, it didn't have to end like this. D had a multi-million dollar house, two nice cars, and a loving family and $120 screwed him out of it all. The next one is titled, Government Auditor from Hell. Okay, so I am a practicing accountant. I can't really identify the country for confidentiality purposes. I had a very dear client, who was in the latter stages of cancer. As his condition worsened, we were contacted by the government for an audit. I submitted what I could, but without his assistance, critical pieces of information would be missing. I called the auditor, and let her know the situation. Literally, without even thinking, she said, since you are avoiding me, I will just disallow everything and find against him. I immediately demanded her name and her government ID. You are not intimidating me, she said as she gave me her info. I put my practice on hold, and asked my client's wife if I could get into her husband's office and search for the documents. With the help of my wife, his wife and his two daughters we got absolutely everything. I held off until the auditor made good her threat. Then I launched an appeal. In that appeal, I presented all of the documents. My client although having passed, by that time, was in the clear, and there would be no government claims against his estate. I then ended the appeal with the following, due to the auditor's inhuman treatment of my client, and her despicable actions, I hereby demand her termination. There was a shit storm that followed. First her supervisor calls me, tells me that I can't demand her termination. I tell him to duck off. Then the shop steward tells me that she is union and they don't get to fire his people. I tell him that she violated several of their stated parameters and she can be terminated for cause. Then I get the deputy head of taxation for our region. He takes time and listens and says that it is difficult but I should not expect that she loses her job. The final call is her, how dare I. She lost her job. She is an immigrant to our country and her husband will beat her for losing her job. How can I do this to her? What has she done that was so bad? I basically told her that in this country we treat our dying people with dignity. That her actions warranted losing her job, and I hope her pension and benefits. She told me she was a year from retirement and she lost her pension. Oh I'm sorry, guess that money would be better spent on a human. The next one is titled, Dad's Revenge. This happened about 20 years ago and I was told the story by my mum later on. Background, 25 to 30 years ago the first few computer related college programs started popping up. Dad thusly got his degree, started a family with mum, got a job and started doing the young family thing. A US company head hunted him and offered to bring us all over. My parents said, yes please. And so we left everything and everyone behind. Now his job at the time was given heaps of notice and he quit on good terms with everyone. Training up the new guy and generally not making waves. As part of his contract, he was told he would be given X amount extra at the end of the year, it was a bonus or severance package or something similar. I mentioned my parents were a young family, straight out of college with two kids already. They had no savings. They were counting on this money to make the transition to America easier. Dad's commute was two hours each way from where they got us our housing. So mum was left with two small kids, no husband, and suddenly no family or friends for support. The bonus had to be signed off by one of the few guys in the pecking order above dad. There was maybe three. The head boss and two others by seniority. He just said no. He got to say no because dad was leaving his job in November, instead of December, when the payout would have been automatic. He benefited because that left more money in the bonus fund for the rest of them. The majority of the trip and move was sponsored by the new job. But mum was left with a shoestring budget and no support for her first four months in a foreign country. Looking back, it was extremely hard on her. So, onwards and upwards. 
Dad's a whiz at his computer-related sorcery and he's jumped companies and moved up the totem pole. The company wants to add more underlings to his department. He's not like head of the department, but his team is performing the best and he's won them a few huge contracts so they ask him to help review applicants. Guess who's applied? The guy that shafted my parents, just because he could. Dad's current company is one of the top ones. So their denial of the greedy dude's application screwed him over for a few other positions at similar companies. You're not supposed to talk, but people do, and they didn't want someone else's reject. He ended up at a startup eventually. Making far less than he would have had he gotten a position at dad's company. Being a prick to my dad set back his career at least 10 years because he had to start all the way over and prove himself from the bottom up. The last one is titled, Douchebag Irritates Entire Crew, Revenge Ensues. So this goes back about a decade and a half to my time on active duty in the US Coast Guard. List of players, op, me douchebag, newbie, doobie, greenies, unqualified deckhands, chief, first class, supervisors so my first unit out of basic training I'm stationed on a ship on the east coast. I'm there for almost two years when I finally promote and I'm up for transfer, but also extend a year because the ship was shorthanded due to an accident, previous transfers. This means requests for replacements as my position would open. So 6 to 8 MOS before I'm scheduled to transfer we receive a couple greenies. So literally out of the four new transfers, three are certified garbage. One is a 18 yo obsessed with anal, I'm not making this up, one never showers, story for another day, and then there's Doobie. Doobie was this Dominican kid from Miami who had gotten into trouble at his previous unit in Miami, more on that later, which is not only insanely lucky place to be stationed but probably why he got into trouble. This kid's majorly screwing up despite only having been in less than 18 MOS. So the fix was to transfer him to the northeast to us as a second chance. So this kid shows his true colors immediately. Can't carry his weight on deck, late to bridge, quarter deck watches, and the definition of a compulsive liar. I mean you can ask this kid his name and he'll tell you something different. So totally untrustworthy. So us deckies were pretty tight. One of the ways of passing time was having wrestling matches on or below deck after hours. Nothing serious just always competitive and always in good fun, never any hard feelings or escalation. Another pastime was the butt smack game. It's exactly as it sounds. You catch someone with their back turned and hard as possible slap their butt. So we allowed Doobie into the wrestling matches and specifically told him the rules, no hurt feelings, no taking it personally, and no dirty play or cheap shots. He's up against another guy and loses, and of course Doobie talks crap and makes it personal. So I step in and again state the rules of the match and Doobie challenges me. We start and immediately Doobie hits me in the nuts. Fine, one more warning. We go again and this butthole does it again. I react in pain and Thanos slam this jerk on the deck. Of course the crap talking begins because everyone is laughing at him. Whatever. So he's out of the wrestling matches and decides to force himself in the butt smack game, and guess who his first target is? Yay, it's go time. So we're on the mess deck, cafeteria, eating area on a ship, and I can tell what Doobie is thinking because he's making BS small talk and slowly inching closer to me. Of course I never turn my back to him knowing better. But the first class on duty walks through and asks me a question so I get distracted, and as soon as he's gone Doobie gives it everything he's got and hit me on the butt. Of course Doobie sucks at whatever he does so I don't even feel it and start to laugh. Doobie can't let that slide so as I go to grab a drink out of the cooler, he sucker punches me right in the nuts. Again, I'm really instinctive when I react to pain so just like the wrestling match, before this dirtbag can get clear, I lob the can of soda in my hand and it nailed him right in the head and orange soda explodes everywhere. This made him back up while I'm bent over in pain cursing at him, he nailed me pretty good, I'll give him that. Doobie talks crap about us being even and walks off. Now the fun begins. At this point I'm little over a month from leaving and the ship's preparing for a short underway trip, only a weekish. So I start putting together my revenge. I start out small. Doobie is known for being late to morning muster and literally one of the only two things that can upset our chief is being late. So Sunday night I'm on duty and Doobie is unfortunately one of my bunk mates. Our staterooms all came with stand-up lockers as well as racks beds with locker storage underneath. While on watch overnight I grabbed the bolt cutters from engineering and clipped the combination locks from both of his lockers. Then I replaced them with two new combo locks I brought the day before. 
The next morning Doobie comes in with less than 10 minutes before muster. Normally he would have been good but of course, not the case this time. After doing overnight watch I'm allowed to sleep into 10am, but I gladly gave up sleep just to see this. 7am comes and the entire crew meets up on the mess deck for muster, no Doobie. First class asks where Doobie is and we all shrug. Meeting's over and the chief tells first class to take care of it. Doobie gets chewed out, still in civilian clothes because he can't get to his locker. Eventually he borrows the bolt cutters and assumes he just forgot the combo to both locks somehow. I say nothing but I'm literally dying inside. I do this two more times and it eventually leads to Doobie getting ridden up. But this is just the beginning. Next I put old food under his mattress like cheese and pickles, so he can smell the rancid odor but it doesn't waft throughout the room. I also start hiding personal belongings like his belt or shoes, etc. So now he's not only frustrated but showing up late again for important events. I saved the finale for our trip. The day before getting underway I decided to spend the night on board the ship. So on top of repeating all the previous pranks one more time I get an idea. So the chief had done a room inspection that week and we got dinged because the head bathroom was a crap show, especially the shower and toilet. I'm talking mold growing in places and caked grime everywhere. So I grab Doobie's toothbrush and I literally scrape underneath the rim of the toilet. I mean deep cleaned and detailed the friggin can till it shined. Time I'm done the toothbrush is literally black and I nearly puked just from the smell. I rinse it afterwards and put it back in the holder for him to find. Sure he'll be upset but can't prove who ruined his toothbrush. So next day we get underway and of course Doobie is scrambling for his stuff that I hid and showing up late at every chance. By day 3 we're all sitting on the mess deck eating dinner and I've totally forgotten about the toothbrush when Doobie slithers in looking like death. One of the crew asks if he's seasick and Doobie tells him the symptoms, sore throat, nausea, headache etc. Then it dawns on me my stunt with his toothbrush might be the cause. The ship's doc overheard Doobie complaining and took him to sickbay where he spends the rest of the trip with a strep throat diagnosis until we pull back into port. Apparently this Nimrod didn't even notice his toothbrush looked like it cleaned a monkey's butthole and still used it. Week later Doobie's back to normal and I let a couple of the deckies in on the revenge plot to unholy amounts of laughter. My last day on the ship I run into Doobie on the way out and of course he's still being a douche, so I tell him about everything from the lockers to the toothbrush and all he can do is be upset because there's no way to prove any of it. Less than a year later I hear Doobie is getting processed out of the military for attempting to smuggle drugs in while home on leave in Miami. Thanks for listening.